Today, we're going to look at a plugin that describes itself as the missing motion for Vim. And this is a plugin by the name of Vim Sneak or Sneak.Vim, however you want to call it. And the basic way this works is it works similar to how writing slash and then searching for something works. Then you can just jump between stuff. But it has some nice quirks about it that makes it really, really useful. And some of those quirks are right here. So it'll work across multiple lines like slash does. It'll work with operators. And it also works with plugins like Repeat and Surround. It works with motion repeats, key maps, visual mode, and multibyte text and macros. So the basic way it works is like this. So you press the letter S, and then you type in two characters, and then you jump to that. But if that's all it did, it wouldn't be too useful. So let's just have a look at some examples of how this works. So on my second screen here, I've got a bit of text here. So let's just try some of the things out. So if we go right to the top, and let's say we wanted to do something like jump to any instance of the letter A. All we have to do here is if we write S, A, and because we don't have a second character here, we can just press enter. As you can see, now it starts highlighting the things we can jump to, and then we can jump along the list with semicolon to go forward, or comma to go backwards. And when you switch the direction you're going, it changes the highlighting you're doing. Now, before we get too far into this, I'll just bring up screen key to make it a bit easier to see. So as I said, you can jump around with your motion repeats. So let's say we wanted to go three instances forward. We could go three and then semicolon that jumps us three instances forward. We could do the same thing by going backwards. So let's say we wanted to go four backwards. So four comma, and that jumps us four backwards. You can also do repeats by pressing S if you set up the S next option, but I find it easier to just jump with semicolon and comma and then keep S to when I want to change what I'm actually searching for. So say I want to jump to right here and then I want to search for something else. So if I had S set up to do the next jump, then I wouldn't be able to press S here to go and actually search for something different. Let's say we want to do by, I don't know, just the letter E now. So we can jump like that, or we could put in two letters now. Let's say we wanted to do something like search for IP. And then it just jumps to that. And it seems like there's only one instance of IP, so that might have been a bad choice. But now that we're at this point, why don't we just search backwards? So if we press the letter capital S, this will let us jump backwards. So as you can see down the bottom here, every time I press S or capital S, it brings up a little prompt down here. So we can actually see what we're typing. And let's say we wanted to jump on, I don't know, uh, ER or RE. So there's two instances of that in this text box. So we can go to the next one by just pressing semicolon. We can go the other direction by pressing comma. Another cool thing you can do is actually limit yourself to a vertical search space. So what this is basically going to do is say we do by five columns starting at the point we're at now. What it's going to do is create a vertical slice basically of the document and then it's just going to do the search within that vertical slice. It doesn't matter how many lines are part of this, it's just going to look within that vertical slice. So let's say we did it by five columns and we search for the letter I. So the way that would work is five. This is the number of columns we're going by. Then we go S and then the thing we want to search for. So in this case, I'm just searching for I. And if we go backwards from this point, this will give you a good example of what it's actually doing. As you can see, it's actually highlighted everything that's within that vertical cut, and this is the only place it's going to be searching for stuff for. Let's do it by IS, actually, and that can give you a bit of a different example. So if we go 5S, IS, as you can see, it's highlighted the things that are here. So we can go forward with semicolon, we can go backwards with comma, and as we go backwards, it will then actually highlight the search space that this is actually looking in. And we can just go to any of these, go forward, it will show you the search space in the other direction now. So searching is cool and all, but that's not all we can actually do with this. If we look at the GitHub page, one of the cool things this can actually do is it interacts with operators. So the operators within Vim are right here. You can do things like change, you can do delete, yank, swap case, uh, different way to swap case, make lowercase, make uppercase, and you can see the rest of them that are here. So let's just test out a few of the things here. Let's say we wanted to do something like delete, I don't know, five instances of the word is from here. Now, if you're going to be using this with operators, you can't use the letter S just because S is being used by one of the other plugins that this actually interacts with. So what we have to do instead is use the letter Z. So if we were to go something like 5D, so delete the next five instances, 
Z, and then what we want to actually search for. So in this case, we're going to be searching for the word is. And as you can see, it deleted five instances of the word is. Now that we've started messing with an operator, this is where I think the plugin starts getting really cool. So keep in mind that we don't just have to use deletion. We can use any of these other operators as well. So we could use change, yank, anything like this. I might go and show you one of those in just a bit. But for now, we're just going to keep working with the deletion example. So now that we're at this point, there's a couple of things we could do. Let's say we want to do the deletion, but from a later point in the document. What we could do now is we could go and research for is, but we don't actually have to because we can still do motion repeats from this point. So if we were to press semicolon, as you can see, it'll still repeat the motion that we last just did. So we can go to a later point like this, and then if we have repeat.vim installed, what we can do from here is if we were to press dot, what that's gonna do is repeat that last deletion we did. So five delete searching for the word is. That I think is really cool. So let's go a bit earlier in this. So let's go back here. And let's say we don't have repeat.vim installed. We can still repeat our deletion. So if we were to go D and then semicolon, that will then do a deletion based on the last thing we searched for, which in this case is is. And you can do that more than once as well. So if we were to do something like say 5D semicolon, what that's gonna do is do five deletions based on the last thing we searched for, which in this case was is. So it deletes the next five instances of is. And we can also do Z backwards as well. So if we go back to an earlier point, so then if we were to do something like say 4D capital Z, so like with capital S, capital Z means to go backwards, and then we'll search for IS again. Now, because we were sitting on an S character, it's not gonna behave the way that we would have expected it to. So you actually have to be just after that point. Because our cursor was actually sitting on the S, it will act a little bit differently. So if we do that again, being actually after the S, 4D, capital Z, IS, now it acts the same way that we would have expected it to. So just keep in mind that if your cursor is currently sitting on the character, that it might not act the exact way you would have thought it would. It's just a little bit of a quirk with working with Vim. So I did mention that this does work with other text operators as well. So let's go to the start of the line. Let's actually fix all this up, go to the start of the line, and pick another operator to work with. So say let's work with make uppercase. Let's see how this would work. So if we go G, capital U, Z, because we're working with a text operator, and then IS, and that's the thing we're searching for, it will make the next instance of the letters IS capitalized. Now, if you're using a system that doesn't ignore case, my Vim does ignore case, so I can't actually do repeats from this point. So if I press dot here, as you can see, it doesn't do anything because technically on my system, this instance of IS in capitals is the same thing as lowercase IS. If I did it with capitals in it from the start, it would be treated as a different thing. I just find it easier to be ignoring case most of the time, but with things like this, it does tend to get in the way. So if I want to repeat it, I have to actually go to the next instance by pressing semicolon, then go dot, semicolon dot, semicolon dot, so on and so forth. But we don't have to do it like that, so let's just clean this bit up. Let's go 5G lowercase u capital Z IS, and that will make the next five instances of IS going backwards lowercase. So what I can do instead is I can go 5G capital U and then go Z IS, and that will make the next five instances of IS capitalized without having to deal with the fact that it's going to be ignoring case. There is one last cool thing I want to mention, and that is that this actually works with Vim Surround. So if we do something like this, if you haven't seen my video on Vim Surround, basically what YS means is the command to basically surround something. So what we can do is YSZ, so surround something, search for it with the letter Z, and then what we want to search for, and then at the end, we basically put what we want to surround it with. So let's just go up to this bit that says lorem up here, and we go YSZ, and we want to search for this right here. So space I, and then we want to surround that with brackets. And as you can see, it then surrounds that word with brackets. And we can do that with a bunch of different surrounding characters. This isn't a video on Vim surround, but we could do say YSZ, go space I, and then surround it with quotes. That is really cool. I do like Vim surround. It was a bit finicky to work with, especially if you just want to surround one bit of text. But with something like this, it actually makes it really, really easy to do. So let's say we wanted to go up here and we wanted to surround up to this point here. So space S. 
what we can do here is we can go ys z space s and then surround it with quotes. I think that is really cool and that is one of the really big things that makes this plugin really useful. If it just worked without interacting with surround and without repeat, that would be good enough. But seeing as it does, this is pretty much just an essential plugin for me to have at this point. Now we're going to keep going all day about the different text operators that it will operate with. It's going to work exactly the same way with all of them, so I'm not going to go over any others. And I'm not going to go through any of the other stuff that will work with, with Vim Surround. But what I do want to go over is basically, there's two things first. Firstly is how to actually install it. I didn't go over this at the start of the video, so if you're on Vimplug, then you can just copy this line in right here. If you're on Pathogen, this line right here, manual installation. You probably know how to do manual installation, and if you're using anything else, then you can probably work it out from what's here. Now, the things I was doing where I was just pressing dot to do repeations, you need to have repeat.vim installed, and the stuff with surrounding, that was being done with Vim Surround. Those are both TPOP plugins. I really recommend them. They are very, very good plugins. Now, you might be wondering, why do you want to use this over something like, say, Slash? Because Slash takes... 33% extra characters. By 33% extra characters, it means it takes literally one extra character. Instead of doing slash A, B, enter, you can just say S, A, B. One less character, slightly quicker. Yeah, it's just a little bit quicker. One thing I didn't go over is you can actually go back to the start of all of your jumps. Now, I should, probably should have mentioned that, actually. So let's say we go S, I, S. And if we were to press quote, quote, that will then take us back to the start of our jump list. So the jump list isn't something that this plugin made. It's something built into Vim. I'm not going to go deep into the jump list today, but just keep in mind that it will actually interact with your Vim jump list. The other thing is that it doesn't clutter your search history. And yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So why not use F? So it says it's 50 times more precise than F or T. I assume that's hyperbole, but it's still cool nonetheless. And the other reason why you don't just want to use this over F is because F is limited to doing one line. Now I have done a video on a plugin that makes working with F and T a little bit easier. Basically what it's going to do is highlight the letter you can press to jump directly to a word, which is nice and all. It's much better than vanilla F. So let's say we want to jump to say sentence here. All we have to do is press E. Now the benefit of using sneak.vim over vanilla F and vanilla T is that it will go across multiple lines. This plugin that I just showed you doesn't go across multiple lines either but it will actually highlight the words you can jump to. So if we use S and let's say we wanted to go search for I, as you can see, it'll go across multiple lines rather than just being limited to the line we're currently on. So it makes it a little bit more flexible. I still think there's a lot of use for that plugin I just showed you just because it shows you exactly what you can press to jump directly to a word. So there is a bit of a use for that. If you just have vanilla F and vanilla T, I would say that sneak.vim actually is considerably better. You might be angry that they remapped S and capital S, but as you can see here, there are other bindings within Vim to do the exact same actions. So, I uh, yeah, it's not too bad, I guess. If you want to replace F with sneak, you can do that with these bindings here. But if you want the one character version of sneak instead, there are one character versions instead. So sneak underscore F, basically just include these bindings within your vimrc or your init.vim, and basically it's just gonna replace those bindings. So I think that this is a really, really awesome plugin. I am not very good with Vim, but I felt like this was really, really easy to get used to. And I've been using it pretty frequently since I first installed it. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. A special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Tiki, Andrew, Platinum, Rode, Tony, Oakley, Ray, and Zilva. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use on this channel, or just anything you want, and I'll get a small kickback for it. Remember to go check out my podcast, Tech Over Tea. That is available on YouTube and Library, and the audio version is available anywhere you can watch podcasts. Also, remember to go subscribe to this channel and ding the little bell icon down below, and remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.